is Thursday, July 29th. Can you believe it? In a few more days, it will be August. <laughs> My goodness, where has the summer gone? Um, August is always a little bittersweet for me because I know that the summer is coming to an end. Um, the flowers kind of start to change and the trees get a little more yellowy green and, and all. I love fall, but um, I enjoy the summer as well. So, uh, so I really like to savor August and um, make sure that thanks Bev for letting me know I just saw that now so that's the delay so I think there's like a 15 or 20 second delay here um, so thank you so much so afternoon tea with Kathleen where we do life sip by sip rather than gulp by gulp and what do I mean by that I mean you know life is crazy busy sometimes and we feel like it's a water hose coming at us and we're gulping and gulping and sometimes it's just nice to sit back and take a few sips rather than gulps. So this is the time um, that you have today, this short time that we have together, where you can at least take that time out of your day and sip rather than gulp. So, hey, Claudia. Oh, I'm so glad you made it. Thanks so much for, for showing up here. Um, I so enjoy your beach post. I was looking at that this morning and just wishing I was there. So thanks so much. Um, so today, um, oh, I want to say Jessie is my remote assistant today. So, um, she's my beautiful daughter-in-law and some of you might know, some of you might not know, but, um, I wanted to share with you that, um, Jessie and my son, Tim got married, um, almost two years ago. And they are expecting their first baby. So my third love bug will be um, coming into the world somewhere around January. And we're so excited. So um, so that's, that's the journey that she's on uh, right now is the early months of pregnancy. So thanks, Jess, for being there and making me look so good and always taking care of everything. I love you and I appreciate you. So... Um, as I've shared before, I am using my notes because if I don't, I will get off track, I'll forget something, or I'll get off on uh, a topic that it's not even in my notes and wasn't even planning to share. So, um, not that there's not a time for that, but um, I want to keep, I want to respect your time and I want to keep on track. So, I always like to start um, with a blessing. So, uh, if we could just take a minute. And um, I'm just going to ask God to bless our time together. So, Lord, I praise you and thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for each and every beautiful person here today. And I pray that I would be able to inspire and encourage and uplift them in some way, shape, or form today. I ask that you would bless them exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond what they could possibly imagine as they move forward in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. So I declare blessing on all of you that you are blessed and, and able to do all that God's called you to do. So I'm going to keep it really real right now. Not that I'm not real all the time, but um, I don't typically uh, typically share these types of things. But um, I am coming off of being uh, away in New England for seven days. Um, my dear father-in-law passed away last week, 95 years old. Um, wonderful legacy. He had a wonderful life, left a wonderful legacy, uh, a man of, of real character, always helping people and um, not judging. And they just, they just had a wonderful life. And I am blessed to be married to um, his son, who exemplifies all of the good things that his dad was. So uh, we had a beautiful service up there for him, and it was just a wonderful time. Um, the downside to that is that I slept in hotels with extremely uncomfortable beds. Like seriously, the people who leave the reviews for hotel beds that they're comfortable must sleep on the floor at home because these beds were not comfortable. And my husband can sleep pretty much anywhere. He was not sleeping either. So we've had six nights of not much sleep. And you know how those air conditioner things, they just, they're never positioned properly. So that was blowing on me um, every night. So dealing with a little sinus stuff and just tired and, and also just recovering from that. So today I had to take my own advice that I've shared with you and I had to get up. I didn't want to get up. I wanted to stay in bed. 
I had to dress up. I even put perfume on. Yep, I know you can't smell it, but I can't. So it makes me feel good. So um, I put one of my favorite shirts on, uh, animal print, and um, and I'm showing up. So <laughs> um, I, I had to have that talk with myself this morning. So I know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I know you've all had to do that as well. So so just keeping it real. That That's where I was at this morning. So um so i'm here i'm showing up and i'm sharing with you which is my passion it is my passion to help you to rediscover your dreams and to equip you to do them because it's no no fun just rediscovering them if you don't know how to get them done right so um in order to kind of enter this space i would like for all of us to just close our eyes for a minute think about wherever that place is that um, you feel just really tranquil and hopeful and it makes you feel like you can just do anything in the world. So just close your eyes, close your eyes, breathe in. Right now I'm thinking of the beautiful video that Claudia showed this morning with the ocean. It reminds me of Newport, Rhode Island, where I love to be on the cliff walk, smelling the roses. Oh, take another deep breath. Hmm. Now, doesn't that feel better? I know it makes me feel better. Um, we can get caught up in all the busyness of the day, distractions, overwhelm, and um, sometimes, many times during the day, I have to stop and just breathe <laughs> and close my eyes, pretend I'm somewhere else for a few minutes. So it works. The more you practice it, the more it works. So today I am drinking some decaf tea with Manuka honey. How many of you have ever tried Manuka honey? Manuka honey is full of nutrients. It's antiviral, antibacterial, and all kinds of things. Um, so uh, it's really, really good for you. So that's what I'm drinking in my tea today in this beautiful cup that a friend brought back from Australia, I think. Yep, Australia. Um, so that's what I'm sipping today. And I, I would love to be sipping it out of one of these beautiful teacups. I have a, a beautiful teacup collection. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? However, with the wide um, opening on it, it doesn't keep the tea hot for very long. So when I'm not going to drink it right down, uh, then I use a cup like this that has a little smaller opening on it. So that's what I'm drinking today. What are you drinking today? Do you have a tea or a coffee or something that you're sharing with us today? Pop it in the comments if you want there. Uh, let's take a peek here. Oh, Claudia. And we have someone from Italy. It's dinner time. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Fisico, perhaps. Catherine, thank you so much. Bev. Thank you. Oh, Corinne, thank you. Sandra. Oh, yeah. Animal print makes you happy, too. Makes me happy, too. I, I have so much animal print in my closet. My husband's like, another one? <laughs> uh, what I really want to find is a cheetah print with a pretty um, pink and gray. That's, that's what I'd love to find. So if any of you know where I can find something like that, pop it in there for me. I'd appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about um, five things that you can do to let go and move forward. Um, and that's so, sometimes that's just so difficult to let go of something, even if it's good, um, even if it's bad, if it's good, sometimes we just have to let go and move forward, right? So we just have to do that. So I have some things, and it's not an exhaustive list, it's not um, complete, there are lots more things. But these are maybe the top five that I go to that I have found work for me over and over and over again. So I'm going to start out by reading a page from my Facets of Graciousness book. And first I'm going to wipe my nose. <laughs> Keeping it real, right? Um, so uh, my Facets of Graciousness book, it is an inspirational journal of sorts. So I have quotes and some scripture and a uh, place for you to, to put some aha moments. So today... I'm going to read the page that um, talks about letting go. So, um, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. That's a scripture in Philippians 3, 13. 
So is there something or someone you need to let go of in order to take hold of your dreams? If your heart, mind, and hands are full of the past, how in the world can they grasp your future or your dreams? So, right, if we're holding on to something from the past that we really need to let go of, our hand, our heart, our mind is not open to grasp the things that are ahead. So we have to let go in order to grab on to the next thing. It's no fun being stuck, right? Being stuck anywhere, um, especially in a place in life where you're stuck on something in the past. You can't change the past. So why live there? Why dwell there, right? Um, and whether it's a hurt or disappointment, a perceived failure, um, from a job, a relationship, or a dream maybe that just didn't work out. Um, we've all been there. We've all had those things. And um, and like I said, even, even things where you have to go from something good to something better or something better to something best, you have to let go in order to move on and move forward. So like I said, this isn't a complete list, but these are probably the top five things that I find help me um, the most. So the first thing is you have to decide. That's like a no-brainer, right? If we don't decide to move forward, we can't move forward. <laughs> it, we have to make that decision, and it's our decision to make. We, we don't need to let that decision up to anyone else. No one else um, should have that responsibility. It should be your decision. I'm going to take another sip of this for my throat. Mm. So you are in control of you. You are in control of your decisions. And if you're not, you really need to change something <laughs> because it's not healthy if you're not. So change is a part of life, something that we need to get used to. We've talked about this on some of the other uh, teas that I've done. Um, change is just part of life. And if we want to grow and experience the best, then we have to be willing to change. Nothing in our lives will ever stay the same, so we have to be willing to get comfortable with change. And we can't change the past. There's we None of us can go back and redo something. We just can't. It's just not possible. We can't change anything. So, like I said, don't live there. But what we can do is we can live in the here and now, and we can create our future. We can decide what we want our future to be and we can create it. But we can't do that while we're dwelling in the past. So we have to let go, we have to make a decision to let go, to move on, and then create the future that we want. And one of the things that um, that really helps me, and this took a long time to get to this place, and sometimes it takes me a little while to remember to get to this place, but what what has really helped me tremendously when something doesn't work out the way that I thought it would or, you know, someone, something, whatever it is, um, I just stop and remember that God has most likely rearranged something for my good and that I can believe that he has something better for me. So while I may or may not have wanted whatever that was to change, to stop or, or whatever, I can choose to believe that there's going to be something better ahead. And that is a choice. And every time I choose to do that, there is something better ahead. I might not see it tomorrow or the next day or even next week, and it might even take a year or two. Um, but there's always something better. So that is something that has really, really helped me. <clears throat> the other thing that's really helped me, excuse me again, all this post-nasal drip from those wonderful air conditioning units, <laughs> um, is to forgive, okay? So forgiveness is a topic all its own. We could stay there for a while, but we're not going to today. Maybe I'll um, expound on it another time. But let me just say that whether it's yourself, so a lot of times we have to forgive ourselves 
we have um, maybe let ourselves down or we perceive that we've let ourselves down. Uh, we've maybe done or said something we shouldn't have and it caused uh, a, a situation that was a problem or is a problem. And maybe there's nothing we can do to fix it. So we have to move on. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to give ourselves grace. Grace for ourselves, right? So the other thing is if other people were involved, we have to forgive them. And let me just say right off the bat, you know, I always say, oh, I can't forgive them. I can't forgive them. Um, oh, Claudia, I saw you have uh, cacao. Oh, cacao. Um, wonderful. Wonderful. Um, and Corinne, oh, thank you. It's a great book. I'm so glad you enjoy it. So where was I here? Oh, forgiveness. So we can really get stuck in unforgiveness, and that is not a healthy place to be. It does not um, help you to move forward at all. And when we choose to forgive someone else, it doesn't mean we're condoning what they did. It doesn't mean we're excusing what they did. Maybe there's no excuse whatsoever, and maybe it was a horrible thing. There's no condoning that. So we don't forgive so much um, for the other person. We forgive because it helps us. First of all, it's a command that God gives us. And second of all, it's a negative place. It's a negative energy. And as long as you're holding on to it, you will block and prevent other good things from happening in your life. It's just how it goes. It's a spiritual law. So forgiving um, is one of the biggest things. Now, um, I'm not going to go there today, but, you know, there are situations where people have hurt you or are not healthy. Um, you can forgive and still not have anything to do with someone if they're not a healthy person to be around. So let me just throw that out there. Um, so forgiving doesn't mean going back into a dysfunctional or abusive situation. So that's not what I'm talking about. So, um, and then don't play the blame game. You know, so many times I hear people, something doesn't work out, you know, they've got to blame somebody, probably because they don't understand why or they think it was unfair or whatever. But when you play the blame game, let me just tell you, there's no winner. No one wins. So why play? forget it just stop it okay the third thing is see it and say it okay so that's really two things but they work together so um, see it you need to redefine your vision so when something happens something doesn't work out something ends whatever it is you need to go right to okay what am I going to focus on now what is my vision for moving ahead Maybe you just need to refocus on what your dreams were that you were going after. Maybe you need a new vision. Okay, either way, you need to get to the point where you're seeing something different and you're not dwelling and replaying that movie of the past, the thing that you need to let go of. Okay, and then say it. So here you need to stop talking about what happened, okay, because isn't that what we want to do? We want to tell everybody the injustice that was done and um, go on and on. But what happens then, every single time you repeat that, it brings up emotions and feelings inside as if it was happening right then, okay? So it's basically like ripping a Band-Aid off a wound and pulling the scab off. <laughs> it's kind of gross to think of, but that's what it is. So every single time you, you relay that story to someone else, that's what you're doing. So stop, just stop talking about it. And what you can do instead is start speaking what you want. Start speaking life words over that vision that you are creating. So talk about where you're going, not where you've just been, okay? Um, now, wonderful memories and wins and successes, it's good to revisit those, it's good to talk about those, but again, you can't live there, right? Your past success, any of my past successes, aren't going to get me to where I want to go in the future if I dwell in those, right? I have to be focused on where I'm going not so much where I've been, good or bad. So 
um, words are powerful. So start speaking those words. Those will help you to shape the future that you desire. The fourth thing is to activate faith over fear. So faith is expecting the best, believing the best will happen. And fear basically is believing that the worst is going to happen, right? When you boil it down to it, it's that simple. Faith is expecting the best. Fear is expecting the worst. So I don't know about you, but I choose to go through my life expecting the best. That is something I've done my entire life as far back as I can remember. I believe it's just, you know, it's how God wired me. I know not everyone is wired that way. Excuse me. But you can teach yourself to be wired that way. So, um, so when you have faith for something, it means that you're expecting the best. And when you have fear about something, you're expecting the worst. So you want to strip fear of its power. We talked a little bit about this in one of the previous teas that um, fear, it only has power if you give it power. Okay, so um, you can strip fear of its power by number one, identifying what is the fear? What are you afraid of? Being hurt again, making a mistake, you know, there's, there's numerous things. Well, that's all part of life. So if you're afraid of those things happening, you might as well just curl up in a ball somewhere because you're not going to be able to live life without those things happening at some point in time again. Now we can learn from mistakes. We can learn uh, as we move forward and try not to do the same things over again that caused a problem, but we're never going to eliminate those things. So we just need to get used to that. Then you can deactivate it. So instead of believing the lie of whatever that fear is, create the truth. What is the truth about that? What makes that fear not relevant? Okay, so determine that. And then overcome it by seeing and saying what you want. What we just talked about, activating um, that, um, that process of envisioning uh, what you want and then speaking life over it. So it really is that simple. Um, I think sometimes we complicate things. We allow things to hang out much longer than they need to <clears throat> for various reasons. Uh, but I think the more that we practice this, the more I've practiced it in my life, the easier it gets and the more natural it becomes. So, so just get rid of fear by um, identifying it, deactivating it, and then overcoming it. Choosing faith, so choosing to believe um, that the best is yet to come and forgetting about the worst okay um, the worst things that we fear rarely ever come true so all right and the fifth is action so action is a verb right um, it's okay to take time to regroup and recover we all need to do that you know especially if it was a big blow you know there's nothing wrong with just kind of recovering I've just had to do that you know I got back very late on um, Tuesday evening, I kind of forget what day it is here, Tuesday evening. So I had to take yesterday and this morning, and I just had to rest and regroup, um, get myself together, and probably will do so a, a bit more tomorrow um, because that's what my body requires. And so there's nothing wrong with that, but <laughs> don't stay inactive too long. The longer we're inactive, the easier it gets not to move forward and the scarier it gets. Those fears become bigger. Um, you know, we, we can get pretty good at making excuses and so on, but it's kind of like that old adage, you know, you fall off the horse, get right back on, you fall off a bicycle, get right back on, um, because it helps to um, alleviate the fear of it happening again and it gives you confidence that you can move forward. So determine what your next step will be, no matter how small, how big, how medium it is. Um, just determine a next step and do it. And then the next step and do it. And um, then uh, you can move forward. You can move forward that way when you're putting one foot in front of the other and in front of the other. But you cannot move forward without action okay it takes action so do what i did today get up dress up show up right um and you will be able to gain that momentum 
that will propel you. So, um, so action, that's number five. So we have, uh, let's see, we have decide. So make a decision to move forward. We have forgive, forgive whatever the situation, people, whatever. Um, see it and say it, create your new vision or refresh your old vision. Speak life over it. Activate faith over fear and action. Do something, take action. So let me ask you, in this process, where are you? Okay, where do you fall? Are you somewhere in the middle? Are you at the beginning? Are you in the end? Um, where are you going? Where do you wanna be? Uh, what are the things that you need to do to get there? And what's your next step? What is it that you can do to move you forward? Maybe you have already let go, but you're kind of stuck in limbo. So what are the things that you can do to move forward? There's always something if you wanna um, share in the comments, are you ready to move forward? Just say yes, yes I am, I'm ready. <laughs> Maybe you don't even know what that is, but you're ready to do it. You're ready to move forward. Are you ready? I'm ready. I have a few things I'm moving forward on um, right now, so they're exciting and fun. Hey Jane, how are you? So good to see you guys. I'm sure I've missed some comments, so hello, 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 and thank you so much for being here. So in closing, um, again, let me just say thank you so much. I have so much enjoyed, Bev, I'm so glad you're ready to move forward. Um, I've so much enjoyed this time. I was um, sad to miss last week with um, having to be away. Um, but I've enjoyed it so much that I've decided I want to continue. I'm going to take a couple of weeks, kind of regroup, um, have some family time. We have a little bit of um, family activity stuff going on for summer fun. Um, so uh, I'm going to take those couple of weeks, but I'm working on a couple of things that I'll be popping back on here maybe like mid-August. Uh, I have something called the DREAM formula, so I'm going to spend some time on that. Uh, it's an acronym, D-R-E-A-M, and um, I'm excited to be able to share that with you. So if you don't want to miss anything, um, this is what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to recommend you go to KathleenEllisLifestyleDesign.com. You can find the link on my Facebook pages, and if you go there, there's a place to sign up to be on my email list. Um, that's the best way to make sure that you don't miss anything. I don't spam you. I don't send tons of emails. A few times a month, you'll get an email if there's something special going on, maybe once a week. But unless you sign up for something else that would be a more frequent email, pretty much it's a couple times a month. But that way you'll be able to stay connected and you won't miss anything. Um, and then I wanted also to tell you, uh, I'm on YouTube. And uh, the Facets book, uh, is, there's a tab for that on my website. I also have a Facets of Graciousness Facebook page, so if you want to check that. But one of the things I'm going to do is create, I'm in the midst of creating a blog series that will be on my website for the teas that we did. So the, the video will be there, and then I will have um, a post that will highlight the topic. So that the first one was the gift of you, how special you are. Um, the unique gifts and talents that you you are and why it's so important to develop those. Um, the second one was setbacks, detours, and delays, what to do when those things happen. And uh, the third one, we talked about getting out of our comfort zone, which is a challenge sometimes, right? And then today, letting go and moving forward. So uh, those will be a series of posts that will be there. So you'll be able to go back and visit that for added um encouragement, inspiration, or share it with somebody. That would be one of the highest compliments that you could pay me is to share this, um, if you found it inspirational and, and encouraging and helpful to you in any way, please share it with your friends and, um, and stay connected. That's probably the biggest thing is staying connected. When we stay connected to positive people and to our dreams and we're active actively seeking to accomplish those things, great or small, does not matter, um, then we can, be, we can be pretty much guaranteed that we're going to have joy, we're gonna have peace, gratitude, happiness, um, all of those things 
And as I said in the very first tea, the gift of you, we all have unique gifts and talents that God gave us. And yes, they are to bless us, but um, they are also to bless other people. So when we don't develop our gifts and talents and share them, we're actually robbing other people of the benefit that they could have from whatever knowledge or, or experiences that we've grown through that maybe they haven't yet. So, um, so stay connected. And like I said, I have some really exciting things coming up. Um, I've created a course, um, the dream formula. There's just so much, um, so much that I want to share and I can't just can't do it all at once. <laughs> but um, I found that this is a really fun way to do it. And I, I hope you've enjoyed taking a little time out of your day um, to join me. Yeah, let me just scope here. Um, oh, Sandra, hi. All right. I wish there wasn't such a delay with the um, with the comments. Oh, I'm so glad that you're enjoying and, and applying. Thank you so much. Lots of pink. Oh, Corinne, you have lots of pink. Jesse, you're drinking lemonade. You know, I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be good to that little turn up there. <laughs> she shared a nap with me today that our little love bug is about the size of a turnip. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So, so ladies, I won't keep it. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't assume that there aren't any men on here. Um, I know my son pops on from time to time. Um, I don't know if there's any other guys out there or not, but um, thank you so much for joining me. I've so enjoyed this. I'm going to take a couple weeks break and then I'm going to come back. And um, so stay tuned. And like I said, the best way to, to not miss anything is to go and go ahead and get on my email list. And um, that way I can stay connected. And like I said, if you are interested in a copy of the book, um, I know so many people have enjoyed it. Facets of Graciousness inspirations to smooth the rough edges of life <laughs> sometimes right life gets rough right so thank you so much take care it is thursday uh so have a wonderful weekend enjoy the rest of your summer and i will see you back here in a couple of weeks so thanks so much i appreciate you and love you guys you ladies <laughs> bye bye